We again must realize there has to be a sense of direction. Everybody can't have their own direction. There has to be a central direction. And this is why you have all the confusion again in Christianity, because you've got too many different uh, guides, too many different shepherds, too many different so-called prophets. Amen. Amen. There's only one prophet to one part of the vineyard in one dispensation of time. Now, a, a, a prophetess. Now, there are prophetess. Praise the Lord. And uh, we have one in our church. But now, uh, Joyce Myers is not a prophetess. Amen. Uh, many of these so-called uh, women preachers are not called by God. Now, I'm not against a woman in the ministry. Praise God and thank God for them. But every woman you see preaching is not called by God. Amen. I saw uh, a sister over the internet the other day and I emailed her. Uh, she said she's a prophetess. She had on earrings down to her shoulders, lips painted red, and a no head cover. So when I gave her the scripture, she emailed me back and said, well, uh, the spirit tells you how to dress. I said, yes, the Spirit tells you how to dress, but the Spirit puts it in book form. Yeah, yeah. And if you go to 1 Timothy 2 and 9, 1 Peter 3 and 3, it tells you in book form how the Spirit wants the church to dress. Hallelujah. So I think she uh, fairly understands it. I haven't heard any, anything back from her yet, uh, but hopefully she will accept the correction uh, with uh, love and with the respect that is due. And if she does not, then she's a rebellious person. Amen. Anytime you're not rebelling against me, you're rebelling against the word of God. Amen. Okay, you're not fighting me, you're fighting God. Praise the Lord. So, no, all, all prophetesses are not called by God. They're not sent by God. Amen. Matter of fact, most of them sent themselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so I wanted to just clear up that. Now, also, she mentioned about what? First part. The veils and the white robes. All right, the veils. Uh, first Timothy, uh, uh, pardon me, First Corinthians 11 chapter. Amen. Jump right in verse 1 and 2. Again, what did the Lord say? Yes. So uh, we have to fully understand that God has a, a sense of direction and he puts it in book form for a preacher to rightly interpret the word so that the church will not get lost but follow in the direction God wants his church to travel. In 1 first, first Corinthians 11 chapter, uh, right from verse 1 and 2. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now it, it says keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you. Yes. Now the ordinance is very plain in verse 5. Amen. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Any time a woman enters a house of God and she does not have a veil covering, she dishonors her head. Amen. And the Bible says it's the same as if she were shaven. Amen. Now, we have to fully be aware that the scripture gives us the regulation. Also, if you study to prove yourself, you go back into biblical history that may not, everything may not be recorded in the Bible, but it is brought out clearly in the history. Amen. Now, in the Holmes Dictionary Bible, uh, I'm trying to find that uh, covering. Uh, it says very plainly that Paul gave this writing because there was a confusion in the church. And that uh, women thought because Paul was teaching a grace that they didn't have to uh, cover their head. Amen. And this is why Paul wrote that uh, teaching in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Now, I'm, I've got the Harvard's Dictionary Bible. Page now, as many times as I found this, I can't. Page 313. Is it 313? Yes, sir, man. All right. Let's uh, 
Well, that's going to tell you to turn your Bible to 3.13, no? <laughs> Praise the Lord, I'm going to get it. All right, 3.13. Amen. Here, Holman's Dictionary Bible brings this out clearly. Notice, some of the Corinthian Christian women had evidently appeared in worship without a veil. They came to church without a veil on their heads. Perhaps they understood Paul's emphasis on Christian freedom, talking about the dispensation of grace now, to mean that they no longer had to observe any of the old Jewish customs, including that of wearing a veil. The effects of such a change in dress style had been disruptive to the worship service and Christian witness in Corinth. This led Paul to state that a woman should cover her head. This is why Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 5 and 6. During the worship service, at the same time, he encouraged the men to follow the Jewish custom of worshiping with uncovered heads. Now, another uh, passage in Holman's Dictionary plainly states, I think it's a new revised Holman Dictionary, it plainly states that Paul made a statement that it was unthinkable for a woman to go to church without a veil covering. Amen. So we see why we wear a veil covering, and we wonder why the secular churches don't wear a veil covering. Amen. Amen. Now, many of the traditions that came out of Judaism was passed over into the New Testament church. And except there's a statue from an apostle to alter that which came out of Judaism, we're to observe it. But where there's no statute to alter it, for instance, example, under the law, if you committed fornication, you were stoned to death. But under the dispensation of grace, you're not stoned to death. You have an option to repent. Amen. So the law is not necessarily changed concerning the sin, but the punishment to the sin is changed. Amen. But in the veil covering, the veil covering never was altered by an apostle. Amen. As a matter of fact, it was reinstituted by the apostle, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verse 5 and 6. So therefore, women have to have their head covered with a veil when they come to church, and not only when they come to church, but when they go to a public gathering. Amen. They're to have a veil covering on their head. Why don't they do this today? They don't do it today because of the enemy having entered the churches today, bringing a false interpretation of the scripture. Amen. It's foolish to, for you, uh, you preachers telling that a woman's hair is a covering. That's just as much nonsense. My goodness. Is it, it, to say that uh, I'm going to baptize you, but I'm just going to sprinkle some water on your head. That's not a baptism. Amen. Baptism means to be immersed in water. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus settled that in the third chapter of Matthew. Amen. When he came to John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, I have no need to baptize you. Jesus said, suffer it to be, thus is to fulfill all righteousness. And John took him in the river Jordan and baptized him. Amen. And we see the same thing with, with the Ethiopian eunuch. Amen. Philip took him out into the water and baptized him. Amen. Not sprinkling no water on his head. Amen. So there's a whole lot of misconceptions in uh, being uh, permeated uh, in the name of Jesus, but has no, really no Bible legality. So we have to, we see here where it's important, not only important, it's a commandment that a woman wear a veil covering, not only in church, but when she goes to a public gathering. Amen. Now let's deal with the white robe. Uh, turn to Revelation, uh, sixth chapter. Now the white robe, and I want uh, those viewing by way of internet to fully understand me. It is not mandatory, but 1 Timothy 2 and 9 is mandatory. Hallelujah. Paul said that a woman dressed in sobriety and modest apparel. Now, if you dress modestly and soberly, then you'll be uniformed. You won't have one have a flashy red dress, one have a sartreuse dress, one have a polka dotted dress. Uh, you got all this type of flash and no singleness of mind. So we, in true light, have decided for the sisterhood to wear a white robe. Amen. Now, we do have scripture to back us up. Amen. In uh, the sixth chapter, and jump right in at verse 11. And what?
five rows were given unto every one of them. 